Symantec worked on together, which uh, Ian mentioned we call Engineer in a Box. It's a very different type of solution you can put into your toolbox. And I do want to clarify, uh, we're not really presenting this as the end-all be-all solution that you should be buying right now, but it is something that's a little bit different that I think you should be aware of. And again, keep in your toolbox. So first let's define the target audience and who it's meant to help. So this solution is specifically meant to help those that are working on the plant floor. So are there maintenance to deal with surprise issues, uh, service providers that need access for an engineering project or your commission staff or OEMs that need access to machines to support them and provide warranty. Um, second, let's look at uh, how this usually works today. So as Ian mentioned, typically remote support uh, gets in through the uh, gets into the industrial network through the business network. Um, and they can come through the business network, uh, connect to a server running some programming software on it. And then that programming software will then have access to the device uh, that needs to be reached. And that's basically what the blue line is showing on the graphic. And there's nothing inherently wrong with this. Uh, Grand Tech uses setups like this, uh, and we install them all the time. Um, of course, it's not the perfect solution for all situations, and uh, most people know this. So what are the situations where it's not as helpful as it could be? So for example, um, the process you need to go through with IT can be a little bit cumbersome. Um, it's really understandable. IT has to manage a lot under their purview um, and keep it secure. And to do so, they need processes uh, to do that. That, but it can be slower than OT would need in certain situations when something urgent arises or a change needs to be made. Um, the other challenge with this setup um, uh, where it's not the perfect fit is that you need uh, the programming software running on the servers and licensed in advance. Um, network configurations also need to be set up in advance. Server usernames and passwords need to be linked up and doing all of that usually takes some sort of an internal project and budget. Um, to do, so it's not a simple endeavor. Uh, basically, there's nothing wrong with this, it works. You're probably still gonna be using this in some places, um, but the, the big thing that it's lacking is flexibility. So <clears throat> what we came up with is a way um, to help with those type of staff members in those type of uh, uh, flexible situations. So uh, next I'll talk about what Engineer in a Box actually is, and it's simple enough. It's a hardware appliance that those on the plant floor can use to connect remote support staff to the network or devices directly. It looks like the image on the screen, it needs power and an internet connection to run, and that's essentially it. Um, it can get that internet connection either through the plant's Wi-Fi or an LTE connection. Um, if neither of those work, it can also get internet through the plant's LAN, but Wi-Fi and LTE is honestly simpler. Um, and there is no configuration that is done by on-site staff. Essentially, uh, if you were to purchase one, theoretically, Grantech pre-configures it and ships it to the facility so uh, its backend connections work automatically as soon as it's powered up. Um, Grantech can even remotely change the box's IP address through that automatically established remote connection. So next, let me describe how it would actually work and what that would look like. Um, essentially, a maintenance or a project team member can uh, basically carry the engineer in a box around with them and connect it directly into whatever they're having an issue with, sort of like Ian's ideal model uh, intro slides. Um, they can connect it directly into the device or into a nearby switch. And then from their perspective, that's all that they need to do. And now the remote support person uh, can reach what they need to. Um, they can now sort of securely, quote unquote, bypass IT's uh, business systems. In the back end, the appliance is using the LTE or Wi-Fi connection to connect to the Dispel secure environment that Ian went over um, using the secure technology um, mentioned, the moving target defense. Um, so for some users, this would be enough. Um, they no longer need to go through the IT process to get a user added and establish a new connection to a device, which is a huge benefit. However, for other customers, uh, you can get uh, some additional and uh, value out of it. Um, a great unique part of this solution is that you can actually migrate those programming applications into uh, Dispel's cloud environment. And this brings uh, a ton of additional benefits. So for example, you no longer need to maintain those servers on site, updating and patching them is easier. If you need to establish a new vendor or a connection to a new device, this can be done quickly by the OT staff themselves without, uh, with IT oversight as, uh, of course, but without needing as much direct IT involvement. Um, the best part is that you don't need a coordinated project to deploy new software to the cloud or set up new connections. Um, so remember how I mentioned 
earlier that typical setups work, but they're lacking flexibility. This sort of gives that flexibility while maintaining security and even adding some additional benefits. Um, and if you go through the ROI calculation that Ian laid out, um, it also saves a ton of money over time. Now, the last thing I'll touch on is scalability. Um, rearranging the slide a bit, I'll show you what it would look like to scale out the solution. And essentially, it looks exactly the same at the second facility. Um, the second facility would have another engineer in a box, which would connect to the same secure environment with the same programming servers available. Um, and this is also uh, a big benefit. So organizations have been looking for a way to leverage the cloud and reduce computing resources. And this platform sort of gives you a way to do so easily, plus it gives you the remote access. Um, so it would mean you don't need individual facilities to maintain and license the same software over and over. Um, a server image can be set up once and then reused for to service as many facilities as you need it to be accessed from. Um, because Engineer in a Box is portable, you can also ship them to remote locations for commissioning when it's needed. So it could be shipped to a remote location for commissioning. Those same programming servers are able to reach it. Somebody could be remotely commissioning and then it can be shipped back when you no longer need it. Um, so the ROI calculation works in your favor for one deployment, but it also compounds when you factor in sharing server resources between facilities and remote locations, travel cost savings, downtime reduction, relief from IT timelines and labor, and so on. It all becomes larger as you scale up. Um,